Hey, good morning, Twin Lakes Church. My name is Kyle. Happy to be with you for today's daily devotional. Uh, we are in a series on the weekends called One Another, talking about relationships. And so today I want to read you a verse about our relationship with those around us, our neighbors and, and people that are part of our community. Found in James chapter 5, verse 16, it says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. For the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And we read this and a few things jump out right away to me. The first is that we start with this word, therefore. A little trick I learned a long time ago, if you ever start a verse and it starts with therefore, it's good to ask, what is that therefore? And so we can go up a verse or a couple verses to kind of gain some understanding and context. And if we just jump up one verse to verse 15, what it's talking about it says, and the prayers offered in faith will make a sick person well and the Lord will raise them up. And if they have sinned, they will be forgiven. And so James is talking about, and seems like he's guaranteeing healing if we pray in faith. And God very much can heal physical uh, needs uh, if we pray and come to him in faith. He can do that. But James isn't guaranteeing that God's going to just do whatever we command like a genie. Instead, what James is doing is James is saying that there is power in prayer. And when we come faithfully to God, he can heal physically. And he also can heal spiritually and that God uh, is at work when we are uh, unified in prayer. And so I think that's important that we understand that as we go into the part that we read first. It says, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you can be healed. For the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. It's important because as a community, as a church, uh, it is very, very important to be praying for each other. I know for me, that's a difficult thing. Often I fell into this bad habit of saying, oh, I'll pray for you. And then I'd walk away and I'd totally blank on it. Or maybe I had good intentions to pray for them. But when it came to my prayer time, I forgot who was it that I said I'd pray for? Or what, what was that person going through? And so a little practical application that I took is from now on, when I tell people I'm going to pray for them, I do one of two things. I either A, stop and pray for them right away and say, can I pray with you right now about that? Which can be a little uncomfortable, but also can be really rich and, and an awesome thing to bond me with those people and just as brothers and sisters in Christ. Or as soon as the conversation's over, if I've told someone I'm gonna pray for them, as I'm walking away, I will say a little prayer in my head about the situation. That way I can stay true to my word and I can come to God in faith, trusting that he is gonna work in the ways that he is gonna work. And I, I kind of surrender that to him. And I think that's a way we can love our neighbors and, and love the people around us, maybe that we know as acquaintances, but also for those in our tighter community, we can share our burdens and our needs and confess what's going on in our lives so that we can hold each other accountable and be faithful to pray for each other. And so I hope you're encouraged by that. And I hope you apply that during uh, even this week that you would be praying for the people around you and especially those in your close community that you know what's going on in their lives. So God bless you guys. We love you. We hope to see you this weekend.